Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching the Now Let's Review channel and we're about to review the Navi S65 scooter next on Now Let's Review. Okay, so is it Navi or Navy? It depends on whether you want it to be the Navy or the aliens from the James Cameron movie. I don't know. It um, actually looks like it could come from a sci-fi movie. It's a really well um, designed scooter. I haven't seen one quite like this. Um, before we get into the specs, I just want to talk about the design because it is kind of eye-catching. This green and this really cool this, uh, yeah, this green reflective line in there. bit, that is really nice. Um, the wheels look really cool. Really futuristic. On both ends, so there's no like spokes or anything and that gives it a futuristic look. I thought at first that um, this was a dual motor scooter since they both kind of have this look to them. It's not the case, just a rear wheel drive um, and 500 watts of power at the rear wheel. Yep. And so it's, it's pretty peppy. I would say. Um, yeah, it's got three speeds. Yep. Uh, up to 20 miles an hour top speed. And um, we've seen scooters with this style suspension before. And I have to say, I do love um, the double swing arm suspension. Um, gives you this really cushy ride. It soaks up all the bumps. Um, it's very fun and responsive. Although every scooter that we've tested out double swing arm suspension on, the scooter itself is built for like insane, uh, motorsports people mm -hmm. for some reason um, where like there's like 3,000 watts of power and it goes 70 miles an hour. This one is nice. I actually like that it only goes 20. Yeah, this is a real commuter scooter, but you're right. It, it puts in these features that um, you kind of miss on most commuter scooters. But let's get to this. So the price of this scooter, I've seen it on many websites for $11.99. That mm -hmm. seems to be like $13.99, but on sale for $11.99. So it puts it a little pricey for the commuter scooter um, price point, but it does give you this feature that you don't see on many commuter scooters. And if you're going to have a long commute with a lot of potholes and curbs and stuff, I do agree with you. Having this type of swing arm suspension means that you actually get real suspension. You can really feel it when you get on the unit, as opposed to that like little springy, um, like one inch suspension that doesn't really soak up much. Yeah, I think that in terms of comfort, um, you're paying for it for sure, um, but you're also paying for a little bit more range. Uh, this claims a 40 mile range, yeah. which is excellent. I think that a lot of people's commutes can be in the 20 mile range. Um, and that's usually when they're taking a car to get there. Now, normally range estimates are a little rosy. So I would assume that this is gonna be closer to 20 miles. Uh, depends on how you ride it and how much you weigh. Um, and let's talk about the weight for a second um, uh, of you you can only be 265 pounds to ride this. Now I'm about 220 um, and I was feeling that I could actually bottom out the suspension a bit. Hmm. So this definitely feels like it's built for a lighter rider than some of the more beefy scooters. I really like that this has a big deck. It's 135 square inches. So there's plenty of room to put your feet. And I really like this uh, rubber pattern here. It really was easy to stand on. But I will say that having this section uh, be stuff that you're not supposed to step on. It says actually here, warning, no step. Kind of you want something to kind of plant your back foot when mm. you're accelerating. Cause with 500 watts, this does actually have some pep to it, um, but that, you know, doing that flat footed can feel a little weird. You're pulling on the handlebars as opposed to pushing off of a, kind of some kind of back piece here, um, which a lot of the faster scooters have. Um, I don't think it's the end of the world. It's just something you have to get used to. Yeah, because they put this clip here so that when you're doing the folding, well, let's do, let's just show the folding mechanism. It's sure. really nice and quick. So just pull up on this, pull this forward, make sure that's unclipped. This comes down, but then here's the only part I don't like. This little clip here has to clip onto this. Yep. And that means that now everything's been shifted over. And if you're trying to fit this into a car trunk or something. Right. Can you see that? This is the folded up thing. And so, yeah, you, you just, just lost like eight inches or something. Yeah. Um, and so it's going to be, I mean, it'll definitely fit in an SUV, but like a car trunk, maybe not. Um, and then if you're bringing it on the train oh. here, this exactly just happened. If you're carrying this and you kind of, uh, you know, put it down for a slight second and this on hooks. Now you're like, Ugh. right. So I don't know. It's good. I think you pointed this out. It's good for picking it up to put it into a car, but it's not really meant for much more than that. And this weighs about uh, 55 pounds. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. So as a commuter scooter, great if you're really not getting it on and off buses or trains, in my opinion, as soon as you have to do anything more than maybe get on an elevator with it, I would say this is probably too heavy a scooter for that. Yeah, I, again, no flights of stairs, unless you're Superman. Uh, yeah, keep this 
this as a vehicle, um, but a vehicle that can be transported in a larger vehicle like an SUV. I really like the finish. Uh, this is a, uh, like it's got a texture to it and it's a matte finish with little, little bit of sparkle to it. Yeah, um, it's just, it's really nice up close. And so the whole thing fit and finish looks really nice. You can see some of the welds. I kind of wish that they had taken care of that, but up here in the upper part of the of the headstock, you don't see any welds, so that's nice. Right, well, these welds are actually really nice. As a, as a welder, I can tell you, um, Nice stack of dimes. I have to be. I have to be yeah. clear. I think that that's why they kept them to show you that that those are nice welds. We've seen some pretty uh, slapdash looking welds on on some of these e-mobility devices. Um, yeah, this is really well built. Um, I want to talk about well built right here. This is normally a spot where if it's not well built, you feel it, you feel a little bit of rattle and you do not want that on your handlebars. And this is solid. And you saw how quickly I unclasped it and clasped it. It's mm -hmm. just really easy mechanism. It's a really well built mechanism. Um, I'm impressed with that. I was also impressed with how it was packaged. Um, the only thing that wasn't attached, uh, well, it was attached, but it wasn't was uh, completely attached, was the handlebars. Um, all you have to do is right insert four screws. They supply uh, five screws, just in case you lose one, mm -hmm. and they give you the Allen key to do it. So I thought that that was really nice. Oh, that and they the had the blue um, stuff on there. That's true, so the, those won't rattle out. Um, the only other thing that we had to do was pump up the tires, which brings me to a crazy thing. This has tire pressure monitoring system. Yeah, it's no, not mentioned anywhere. We just happened to spot it because it came with the little bit low tire pressure. Yep. And let me just mention, unlike a many wheels, you can barely see where to fill these because they have just a little tire cap right there, which is really nice. But so these are tubeless. And I know you might be like, who cares? Well, if they have tubes in them, as we've talked about on many videos, very likely that over time you'll have to replace those tubes. We don't have a lot of experience with tubeless tires here. That's the kind that, like your car has. Um, and so it is one less thing to pop. I mean, obviously if you get like a nail here, they say it's self-sealing. I don't know if that's entirely true. Um, but if that were to get a, a nail in it, you could maybe try to put slime in there. Um, it, I don't know. It's probably gonna be a temporary solution. But yeah, tubed tires, we've moved away from them in cars for a reason and right. we've moved to this technology tubeless tires um i've been saying before that i like solid tires on my scooters because i know they won't pop but that's mainly because most scooter tires have been tubed and the tubes are relatively thin mm -hmm. so if any little piece of sand or grit or even part of the tire itself comes out inside the tire and you're putting like a thousand watts of power down on the rear or front wheels um, that can lead to those tires getting worn out very quickly so nothing is actually puncturing most of these uh, scooter tires right. it's just the grit that's wearing away those tubes it's a really good point we've actually never <laughs> popped one of those uh, from a, like a nail we've always just had them wear out inside and so they're always going to have those slow leaks having a tubeless tire I, i'm going to be cautiously optimistic i think that this is probably the way to go um, because that's what we've done with cars and because it's not as easily repairable as a bike tire. Right. On a bike, you can pull off the wheel and you can replace the tire with hardly any tools. With any kind of scooter, because the radius of the wheel is so much smaller, it makes replacing, pulling the tire off right. really hard. So let's talk about these, they're 10 inch, um, and let's talk about the rear motor. So there's only one motor, as Jesse mentioned, it's 500 watts, and it's a geared motor. They don't always do geared motors. Geared motors are great for some things, gives you more power going up hills, so this can go up a 25% incline. Although, as we noticed, it's very noisy. So if you're in this urban environment, I don't think it matters. I don't think you'll even hear it. But if you're in like a suburban, quiet country road, you will hear it. If that's a problem for you, just be thinking about that. It's not a quiet scooter. Yeah, I mean, this might draw some looks on the bike path or something like that. I, I don't think it's anything to really be that worried about, but it is audible. I would say that this is probably audible to a distance of at least like 15 yards. Oh yeah, at least. Maybe, like, we maybe heard it a like more. a block away. You're hearing just like a knee because it's a gear that you're hearing. You're hearing all the gearing right. meshing with each other. Um, let's talk about the battery. It's a pretty big platform, but the battery itself is only 596 watt hours. So it's a 48 volt, 12.75 amp hour battery. So not huge. I think what they did was they designed it in a way where they used a smaller motor, geared it lighter, so they could get more range, a little bit less power. So if you're the kind of rider who wants to just be fast, this is not your scooter. This goes up to 20 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. If you're a commuter who needs that speed, great. But 20 miles an hour to me, like I don't like going much faster than that unless 
little bits of bursts I do,、mm. meaning like through an intersection or oh, there's a little stretch of road where I want to keep up with traffic. You won't really be able to keep up with traffic on this scooter. But I would say anywhere where there are you know bike lanes, anywhere where you know you're going to be riding with you know slow-ish traffic or just having a lot of room, I think that this is an excellent speed. It's not going to be too fast or too scary.、Um, but let's talk about probably the worst part about this scooter. Okay. It's the brakes, and that's kind of the worst part for me. Is if it was the motor,、eh, big deal. You just don't go as fast. But I will say, having a single disc brake in the rear、um, means that your braking is going to be pretty relaxed,、um, which can be good for some things. Like you're not going to flip over the handlebars because it's. Pretty much, literally impossible to brake and flip over the handlebars with rear brake.、Um, but this means that you're going to get a lot less braking force, which means that slowing down in an emergency is not going to happen as quickly for you. Good point. So there is an app that you can use. It's basically built off the Show Me app, and so there's nothing really remarkable about the app. I wouldn't really buy this for the app. It's just nice if you want to have it on your handlebars or something. But pretty much everything you need to know is already on the screen. So let's talk about the screen. The screen is going to tell you your speed, your battery. Level and which of the three speeds you're in. Yep, which is pretty much all you need to know. Oh, and it has the tire pressure sensor on there, which is really funny. You know, we turned it on the first time and、uh, it had the little、um, thing that you see in your car of the low tire pressure, and I was like, how does it? How does it know?、Um, which is really amazing.、Um, so yeah, these were at 30、uh, psi. You want them at 45. So just a quick pump. Um, they're nice and small, so it pumps up really quick. Comes with a 2.3 amp charger, so about 120 watts, really. So、um, probably going to be four to six hours to charge it up from an empty. But it's about standard.、Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the headlight and the tail light. So as you can see, we got a nice bright headlight here, well focused, I will say. So it's it's kind of just pointing where you're going. Yeah, it's 2.5 watts. Um, and I would say that that is adequately bright for most of your nighttime riding. It also comes with a nice bright red tail light,、um, relatively low, I would say, but it's going to be bright enough to get attention and also flashes when you hit the brakes.、Yeah. Um, you can also turn off the headlight,、um, and the brake will simply、uh, flash from time to time when you hit the brakes. Yeah, it's all about visibility. Speaking of visibility, you do get some reflectors on the side, but they are not blinkers. And then, lastly, let's talk about the kickstand.、Um, I will say that this looks like it's at an unstable angle, like it's tilting too much. Yeah, it looked like they maybe designed it where the suspension was supposed to be under load. It would look better. I have yet to find a scooter that feels like it's not going to fall over,、um, but this one actually is pretty good. So if I push it over. It actually wants to come back, so、yeah. it's it's not as bad as it looks. No, they bounced it really well, and it's hard to get it to go the other way. So I think that they actually did their job here, and the kickstand is actually pretty good, even though it looks like it's about to fall over. Yeah. So to me, if they had been able to get it under the thousand dollar price point, I would say it's a winner. The fact that it's at twelve hundred dollars, I don't know. It's just at that questionable point. I think it has a lot of great features. I'm just not sure if it fits the budget for a lot of commuters. But I will say it's the dual suspension that would kind of put it. Over the line for me if I was trying to decide, and I was going to be on roads that had any kind of bumps or whatever. If it saves you just once, it's probably worth it. Yeah, I mean, unless you live in I don't know Switzerland,、uh, do they have the best roads? Let let us know in the comments. This might、below. be good for Switzerland because it has the 25% inclines. That's true.、Um, I would say that yeah, unless you are dealing with perfect roads, I love double swing arm suspension. It is so nice.、Um, the brakes to me. Are kind of a deal breaker in my opinion. I had such high hopes for this thing, but I do like to be able to stop, maybe a bit uncomfortably. I will say,、hmm. um, I think that for maybe most people, it, the brakes are going to be just fine. They're going to know that they're going to need to plan ahead in terms of braking. What I've been learning as we've been testing out scooter after scooter after scooter is there's different kinds of people. Yes, and there's different kinds of scooters, and you've got to match yourself.、Um, and so, if you get too powerful a scooter, I just don't touch them anymore. They're just too powerful for me.、Um, it's not like you know, like you think that, like, oh wow, it's like a sports car. I don't have to go fast in it. But with a powerful scooter, it just kind of is inherently more dangerous unless you're that kind of rider. Then there's the kind of just like I'm going to go slowly to work. In which case, you want a nice, comfortable scooter. So that's what I'm saying. If you're that person, kind of me, yeah, then this is probably the scooter for you. It's definitely a very Comfortable. Yeah. Well, I hope that was helpful to you guys.、Um, we need to get your comments down below on what you'd like us to review,、uh, because we do all sorts of things from e-bikes to scooters to EV chargers. So let us know that. Let us know the features you're looking for, and if there's a specific model you want. Like we were just surprised the other day, we had someone comment on a model that we had kind of passed on because、mm -hmm. we're like, eh. But 
it actually looking at it a second time, it has a bunch of cool features. So we're going to try and get that for you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button. That's how we grow the channel and we get more content for you. So make sure you hit them. They're free to do. And we'll see you guys next week. Now let's review. review.